I'm John Hanna for CDTV.net, and we have Dr. Thomas Seidler. He is a professor of economics in the business department of Elizabethtown in Pennsylvania. Yes, tell us about the what is uh, PPI and core PPI. Mm-hmm. Well, so the Department of Labor in the U.S. they collect um, several different, at least three different sort of statistics about how prices are changing over time, and uh, one of the more popular ones that we've all probably heard of is called the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. The PPI, the Producer Price Index, the overall measure um, is just measuring sort of finished goods uh, that are uh, produced by firms and sold to um, other firms or to consumers. And the core PPI is excluding more volatile commodities like energy prices, for instance. So the core PPI is supposed to be a more stable measure of the prices paid for by firms, and the overall PPI is a sort of more volatile measure. Okay, and you mentioned something about the consumer? Uh, Yeah, so basically what um, uh, the way that the PPI, the Producer Price Index, the way the data is collected is the uh, Department of Labor uh, sends out surveys, uh, written, mailed in surveys to, to firms to, um, you know, for them to take note of the prices that they're selling certain goods for. And um, the, uh, this is done on a monthly basis, and for, this is always done, there's, a, there's an arcane way that they do it. They do it the, something like the second Tuesday in the month that has like a 13th in it, you know, like it, it's an odd sort of um, consistent pattern that they use, but it's all mailed in survey. The consumer price index is um, done where individuals, uh, they have survey responders that go out to actual stores and they look at what people are actually um, buying, the prices that people are paying for goods that consumers use, the typical consumer in an urban household. These two statistics, the CPI and the PPI, uh, there's a there's a really there's a there's a misperception or a widely held misperception among um, a lot of individuals that the producer price index predicts or um, is is closely related to the consumer price index, the CPI. But in fact, the two statistics are not that closely related, um, and and we see a lot of. Uh, for instance, the, the producer price index numbers that just came out this month, um, some of the, some uh, are thinking now, right? So it fell about one, about one percent, maybe or perhaps a little bit more. The overall PPI. Some of the individuals are using that as a statistic to predict that the consumer price index number is going to fall, but. I mean, I, I, I don't. I'm not a betting person, but I don't know if I would really bet too much money on that. Okay. The um, which is going to go into our, our next question, which is based on history. Is there a way to see if these numbers are near bottom or near top? Let's say, for example, uh, let's say we're we're going to focus first on the PPI, then we're going to touch on CPI mm-hmm. next. Sure. So the PPI, <laughs> what would be the bottom number that you think would be? Uh, is is there actually a way to predict this or no? Yeah, there, well, there's not a really a way to predict it. Um, unfortunately, you can't even really compare the so the, the 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 consumer price index and the producer price index. They're all indexed based on a uh, on a base year and just how an index works. And they even have different base. They even have different base amounts. So. It's not um, so the the number that the, the index number that we get for PPI isn't at all comparable to the um, uh, to the CPI. The PPI and the, P, the CPI are not even comparable numbers to one another. Um, <laughs> overall, we would see that the index numbers, you know, over a very long horizon, would be steadily increasing. That would just be what we know as inflation. Um, 
but it's so difficult, especially with the producer price index, to predict anything because what ends up happening for the producer price index is because individuals are mailing in the surveys, sometimes, you know, just how it is in a corporation that they're slow to mail back the survey and whatnot, well, what the Bureau of Labor or what the Department of Labor does is it keeps revising then the statistic, you know, for several months later. So the first initial statistic you get, much like the GDP, they often go back and they revise it, revise it, and revise it further. So it's really hard to predict um, any sort of changes month to month. And, and for the CPI, it's the same thing. There's um, some statistics in the CPI that they only collect every other month. So it's hard to predict for the CPI as well, what's going to happen month to month to month. In terms of a base number, um, the index number itself um, really doesn't, uh, I mean, from a mathematical sense, the, the, ba the, the index number itself doesn't matter that much because it all depends on what your base year was. Um, so I, mean, I guess you could say a, a bottom, you know, a, the, the the lowest number it could be would be, I guess you could say zero, uh, but it, that doesn't really mean very much. I think some people are really, I mean, there's this, the reason why this sort of, this, this number has come out with a lot of sort of, uh, come out with a lot of discussion about it is because economists are really mixed right now. They're really on the fence about whether we're going to have inflation or deflation. Both are bad problems, but you know we, there, there are many economists who believe there has to you know inflation is going to be coming because we're printing so much money, we're flooding the markets with credit to get the economy to grow. But then there are many other individuals who believe that right if we if we stay in this sort of lackluster economic growth period for a significant amount of time, that prices will fall. So you know we're we're a little bit uncertain about whether there is inflation or deflation. You know the the monetary policy prescriptions you use for the two problems are very different from one another. So the sooner we know, you know which it is, the better off we're going to be. And so I think some people are trying to read in to the producer price index what's going to happen to the consumer price index when its numbers come out. All right, great. I really appreciate the uh, information and, and the talk. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Thomas Seidler. He is the professor of economics at the Business Department of Elizabethtown College in Pennsylvania.